What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason, and you're watching Backtrack Cinema. Welcome to my 31 Days of Horror. And today we're going to be talking about my favorite psychological horror film, which is Psycho. Not only is it psychological, the grandfather of slashers, it's also one of my favorite horror movies of all time. We've already talked about the other two, The Thing and A Nightmare on Elm Street. And you know, on any given day, Psycho is number one. I just love this movie to death. It's another one I watched with my mom. She introduced me to it when I was just a little kid. Six or seven, I think. Maybe six years old. I think I actually watched this before um, Jason Lives. But I just remember Jason Lives a lot more as far as like being my favorite horror film. What It got me into horror movies. But Psycho, I really like too. And like I was completely, even as a six-year-old, I was completely engaged with this movie. Now, clearly the most famous thing about this movie is that shower scene. I mean, there's even a documentary on how they shot the shower scene, the editing. I haven't seen it. I just, one I really would like to watch is that documentary they made on putting together that shower scene and everything. And for good reason, it's one of the, the best scenes in film history, man, because there's so much build up to it, right? There is so much build up to it. And once Marion Crane gets killed, that's when the light goes on. I said, oh, my God, what, for the first 45 minutes of this film? It's supposed to be about this young lady, Marion Crane. And it's supposed to be this thriller. You know, she steals money and she's ready to go back and give the money back. That's what that discussion with Norman is. You know how layered that discussion is, too. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um but then you realize when she gets killed, oh, it's about Norman. What Hitchcock did is it took the monsters out of the castles and out of this gothic kind of setting and put them into a contemporary every day. Your neighbor could be a killer. The man at the hotel could be the killer. And, you know, we find out that Norman is actually a split personality is that he killed his mom years earlier. And now he acts like his mom. So when he kills, it's in a way it's his mother doing it. And it's just fantastic writing, fantastic film that way. And changed horror for that, right? Now they were doing horror movies of the killer next door, right? Spawned the slasher genre. Then in 1978, we have Halloween, Escape Mental Patient. And he grows up and he comes to kill these babysitters and everything. And then Friday the 13th, man, comes out and adds all the freaking gore. There's a progression to the slasher genre for sure. And Psycho is definitely, in my opinion anyway, as the grandfather of all that. Psycho is a horror film that is a more nuanced way of storytelling, right? Really building up the characters, creating really compelling and interesting dialogue, like the parlor scene, right? When Marion shows up at this hotel, they go back to the parlor, they have a nice conversation and about private traps. I like these, both these characters are on these private traps and the layers of the conversation that's going on we, we we see Marion's, you know, stole this money. I mean, Norman doesn't know that, obviously, but she's speaking in disguise, kind of, where Norman said, well, you must be running from something, right? And then at the end of this conversation, she, in, in her mind, in her heart, she's decided, I'm going to return the money. I'm going to do uh, the moral thing here, right? And then Norman's in a private trap, too. But at this point in the movie, we don't realize that he's he's a split personality, that the his private trap is his mother. He's linked to his mother, right? And I just love the way this conversation plays out and how she starts drawing mother out. Not intentionally, though. Maybe put your mother in a home, all that. And he goes, a home, an institution, a madhouse. And he just starts switching. You mean an institution? A madhouse? And that dark side of him starts coming out. The mother side starts coming out. And he's like, we all go mad sometimes. She's harmless. You know, she just she just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. And he's like, actually, I thought of it about myself like this. <laughs> the way Anthony Perkins plays this character, layered, nuance, awesome. It's a physical approach to the character. He's really twitchy, seems like a stand-up guy. Something a little kind of, you know, awkward about him and everything. But, you know, he's sitting there eating candy corn out of the bag when he's talking to people and stuff. The way Abergast, you know, gets to him and everything, starts um, 
starts really getting to him and he starts twitching out and stuff like that. So I starts twitching and all that guy starts getting really, really nervous and all that kind of stuff. Just fantastic for performances all around. And the shower scene, right? This works so well, right? I just, I love, you know, she goes to take the shower and everything and the metaphors that are going on. Like she's the, this awful crime she's committed by stealing this money. Now she's taking a shower to cleanse it all away. And here comes mother. You know what I mean? And I just love the I love the slow build of it. He's having the shower and everything. You see the door coming in, but you see everything through the shower curtain, right? Where you can't really make up what's going on, which just perfectly filmed, right? And then opens the shower curtain that that, you know, the, the knife's coming in. You never see the knife touch the skin. It's all suggested and everything. But you see someone brutally get murdered because, like I said in other videos, your mind is going to make sense of it. Your mind's going to connect all the dots. And when you, when you think about this movie afterwards, you think, oh, no, she was brutally, viciously murdered because you do see a little bit of blood rolling down the shower drain and everything. But the, the way it's shot, right, with the music, how it's timed with the music. And when she's just lying dead there, when she's sliding down the wall, grabs the shower curtain, falls in that the shot of her eye, he's panning slowly panning out or zooming out or whatever. It's just beautifully shot. You couldn't have come up with better shot choices here. And when Norman comes out, blood mother, blood, and he's cleaning up all the blood and everything like that, and it's all done with just music. You know what I mean? And the the music of the film, it really sells everything. It's really the, the heartbeat that's pulsing through this whole thing. It's a great, great score. The main theme is awesome. But there's that one... um. There's that one motif in it where it's kind of like man, you listen to that. You can make a sandwich, record yourself making a sandwich, put that music on. It would probably be scary. Music is everything and it's everything in horror. It's so important um, in horror or the lack of music sometimes is really important in horror. Now I I will say with Psycho I think the I think the first hour is the strongest part of the film that um with Marion Marion getting killed Norman cleaning it all up when we start getting introduced to Lila Crane the sister and Marion's lover um who owns the hardware store I can't even forget his I forget his name now that's where I find the um, the characters are not as good right you're not invested as much but you're invested in them finding Marion and learning more about Norman and everything. The reveal is freaking classic. You know, Lila's in the basement, turns Mrs. Bates around, and Mrs. Bates is dead. We find out the mother's been dead this whole time and all that kind of stuff. But I, I love that moment, though, where she hits the light and you see the light flickering. Obviously, Friday the 13th picked up on that. Use that shot when Marcy gets killed on Friday the 13th. But you don't, you, you know Norman's coming, but it's the door's closed and you hear him coming down the steps. <laughs> Right. And then you see him in the dress and everything doing that smile. I am Norma Bates or whatever she says there or whatever he says. Sorry. Um, it's just fantastic. Psycho is an absolute classic, man. God, I love this movie. Loved. I love talking about this movie. I love talking Psycho so much. Alfred Hitchcock created so much mood and suspense in this thing. I mean, so many moments, you know, when Lila Crane is going around the house. I mean, that's suspenseful because, you know, Norman's coming. You know, at some point, Norman's going to be coming, right? And when she's upstairs and she goes into the mother's bedroom and everything, I just the production design's creepy. I've always found it creepy how she's looking around. She's looking at, uh, scares herself in the mirror and everything like that. And then when she sees Norman coming, heads for the basement, stuff like that is just dripping with suspense, right? Or Abergas kill, you know, when he's coming up the stairs and you think he's going to get to the top of the stairs around the hallway. But but Alfred Hitchcock, this comes he comes out of nowhere. It comes really early. But at that time, we weren't, you know, we weren't analyzing jump scares and analyzing horror like we do now. You know what I mean? Everyone everyone learns from this. They learn from Psycho. You want to know how to make a movie? You you learn it from freaking Psycho, man. That's how you make a, a suspenseful movie. But the mother comes out and you just see the knife come up. I mean, how many times have you seen that shot of the knife lifting up? And then they kill someone. You know what I mean? It's used so many times, but it's so effective. 
There's something thematically about Psycho of the morality of the whole situation. You know, this woman steals this money. And you know, when she's thinking to herself, she's thinking to herself of getting away with it. If she gets away with it and she has that smirk smile, she gets on. Obviously, she changes her mind and she does the right thing and she intended to do the right thing. But then at the end of the movie, when he's in the blanket, Norman's in the blanket, it's just mother is taking control over his mind now. She has that smirk of, you know, because in a way, the son is the murderer. The mother gets away with it all in his mind, though. And that smirk comes up. So it's like this getting away with thing, getting away with a crime, getting away with murder. V Hitchcock dealt with this stuff a lot. You know what I mean? Like the one movie called Rope is really good about these two guys who commit a, a murder just to see if they can get away with it. This interesting stuff here, interesting stuff in Psycho and compelling stuff with the morality of everything. And can I get away with this? Because there are motives of why Marion steals the money, so she could start a new life with this, um, this this man she loves. But he he can't. He's got so much bills and everything with his divorce, all that kind of stuff going on. And yeah, Psycho is just so compelling, so interesting, moody, nuanced performances. Man, I love Psycho. I love this movie so much. Psychological horror. At its best, man. What a genre. I love psychological horror so much, man. But what about you guys? Do you like Psycho? Does it work for you or doesn't it work for you? Do you think this holds up or do you think that I'm on fucking drugs? Let me know what you think of Psycho. Stick around for the end card and put related content there. And we'll have a good discussion. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, guys. And then join the hell out of 31 Days of Horror. This is so much fun talking about all my favorite horror films with you guys my name is jason you're watching backtrack cinema i will see you next time and i will see you in the movies cheers